On January 31, 2019, we at Auction House Künker will hold our Berlin auction. The lots on offer include the Dr. Gerd Gustav Weiland collection of gold coins from Hamburg. The collection contains the most beautiful Portugaleser you could ever imagine. What a great opportunity for us to tell you more about them. Gold deposits are distributed unevenly across the globe. There are some countries with rich gold mines, whereas some other regions only have the tiniest amount of gold at their disposal. As did, for example, the Holy Roman Empire. Hence, the markets there had a problem when the Italian city-states introduced gold coins for the international trade. Those German authorities who wanted to produce gold coins had to pay a lot of money for the material. They could purchase it, for example, in Portugal, on the market of Lisbon. Due to its trade connections to the gold-rich African continent, Portugal owned a tremendous amount of gold. One part of it was used by Portuguese kings from 1499 on to produce big gold coins. The coins were called Portuguese. They equal ten times the value of a normal Crusados. Hence, they were worth almost exactly ten ducats. They featured the coat of arms and titles of the Portuguese king. On the reverse, we find a big cross. Some minting authorities of northern Germany had imitations of the Portuguese coins truck. Hamburg began doing so before 1560. We know of double, single, half and quarter Portugalese from the region of the Elbe River. This is a quarter Portugalese worth two and a half ducats, struck between 1578 and 1582. You have probably asked yourself why they are sometimes referred to as Portugalese and sometimes as Portugalese. Well, the correct pronunciation would be Portugalese, meaning coins from Portugal. But the large gold coins reminded those who used them of the heavy silver coins from Brunswick. Those were called Löser and the term rubbed off. The Portugalese turned into Portugalese. Portugalese from German mints are extremely rare because striking them was not allowed according to the imperial minting ordinance. They were too big for everyday use anyway. Their counter value equaled 100 day wages of a journeyman bricklayer in Hamburg. But then Hamburg became really rich. Between 1526, the year this image was painted, and 1551, the state budget of Hamburg tripled. The city was rolling in money, which was the reason why it was able to afford a hyper-modern city fortification shortly before the Thirty Years' War began. That was a downright brilliant investment. While the Thirty Years' War shut down the markets in other parts of Germany, ate up people's fortunes and caused the death of up to two-thirds of the population, the trade business in Hamburg continued. Hence, Hamburg was one of the great gainers of the Thirty Years' War. It comes as no surprise, then, that the city fathers lived their lives to the fullest and indulged in all sorts of representative splendor. This piece was struck around 1645 and was made by the mint master of the Hamburg Mint, Matthias Freude, without the city's commission. Its obverse depicts the Madonna with the Holy Child, as we know it from Hamburg's ducats. Its success might have inspired the issuance of the Bank Portugalesa from 1653 on. They are named after the Bank of Hamburg, founded in 1619, which was responsible for their issuance. Many Bank Portugalese feature a view of Hamburg from the Elbe River.
the high church spires bespeak the city's wealth. The numerous ships bear witness to its lively trade business. On the reverse of this piece from 1665, we can see the crests of Venice, Amsterdam, Nuremberg and Hamburg. All four cities were home to strong banks. This Bank Portugalesa from 1681 explains what those banks really did. On the right, a woman is seen accepting the counted and weighed money. On the left, a second woman is seated, noting what has just been accepted. Underneath the desk, we see a jest labeled Banco. All of the bank deposits were converted to Mark's Banco at the market price. This was a virtual currency that guaranteed the respective amount of money would not be subject to market fluctuations as long as it was transferred within the bank. Thereby, smooth transactions were ensured even in the Tipper and Seesaw time. The backing of the Mark Banco consisted of silver talis. We can see those on the left, next to the chest. The goblets on the right also served as a security guarantee. In those days, tableware was not only an object of prestige, but also an investment. One fitting example we can still marvel at today is the Ratzelbau of Lüneburg. Nowadays it is exhibited at the Museum of Decorative Arts in Berlin. The people of Hamburg knew exactly that it was the Elbe River that made them rich. Nowhere else is this made more obvious than on this Bank Portugalesa from 1691. The personification of Hamburg sits enthroned on the left. Opposite to her lies the river god Albio. His left arm rests on the spring jar, which has water streaming from it. A full-figured woman carrying a ship on her head stands between the two. She holds an overflowing cornucopia in her arm. This represents the personification of the trade on the Elbe River. The Latin inscription reads, the city's wealth will grow for as long as the Elbe carries water. And the reverse tells us where exactly this wealth was augmented. It presents the stock market of Hamburg, a gorgeous Renaissance building. This half bank Portugalesa from 1770 reminds us that, at the time, the backing of the Banco currency was shifted to silver bars. Which is why there is an open copy of the new Banco order on the desk. On the table next to it, we see a scale as well as crucibles and pliers. They were used in the process of cupellation, which served to determine the fineness of precious metals. Not only the Bank of Hamburg issued Portugalesa, the Admiralty also had the right to do so. There, Portugalesers were easy to spot. Hamburg's coat of arms is always combined with an anchor on their pieces. The Admiralty was not only the most important port authority, it was also responsible of the safety of Hamburg's ships on open waters. At the beginning of the 19th century, the advent of which the Portugalesa celebrates, that was quite a difficult task. Fort Dauern des Gelingen, it is ongoing success, almost sounds like a wishful dream. If you keep in mind that the war between revolutionary France and the old regime was fought out on the oceans as well. In 1806, Hamburg was occupied by Napoleon's troops. This resulted in the temporary cessation of their own coinage, and the French closed the mint. After the French had retreated in 1814, the production of Bank Portugalesa was resumed. Most of them were not struck in Hamburg, but in Berlin, in the workshop of Daniel Friedrich Loos, to be exact. This piece, too, was made there in 1826. It is dedicated to the new building of the Bank of Hamburg, which was meant to help live up to earlier success. 
As a matter of fact, Hamburg did undergo an economic boom in the 19th century, which made it necessary to build a newer and bigger stock exchange. This Bank Portugalese from 1841 is dedicated to the new building. When Hamburg joined the German Empire, the issuing of Bank Portugalese ended. Big gold medals were still minted, of course. By force of habit, they were still referred to as Bank Portugalese. By the way, official state guests and citizens of outstanding merit are still honored by the Senate of Hamburg with the awarding of a Portugalese. We at Auction House Künke are very excited to welcome you to join us for the Berlin Auction 2019. Should you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.